I know, I know we can't know the future, but what, what, what do you see happening in, in the next, uh, in the short term with all these uh, volunteer citizens and, uh, and uh, the stood down militias? What, what is going to happen? Another easy question. <laughs> I love this crowd. Um, no one can say. I mean, I, 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 no one can say for sure because it's so volatile. I mean, we've got Turkey almost daily still shelling Kurdistan. We've got Iran even shelling Kurdistan. We've got Turkey doing airstrikes in Kurdistan, threatening invasion. We've got this looming thing with Iran, which if that goes off, all bets are off. I mean, the whole Middle East is liable to go up one way or another. Uh, the total regional war is a distinct possibility, not even talking about all the U.S. bases in Iraq being hit. Um, total uprising across southern Iraq becomes uh, an inferno. Um, most of Baghdad does, uh, just for starters. All the oil infrastructure of the Gulf, gone. Oil goes up over $200 a barrel. What's that do to the economy? So, I mean, all of this, just like talking about first week of, of if and when that happens, and that can happen any time because Bush gave the order a ways back, less than a year ago, that he wanted the Pentagon to be able to uh, initiate that campaign giving, given 24 hours notice. So, I, you know, it, it's, and I think it's going to be that way. I think it'll just be bang, there it goes, or Israel gets the green light or something like this. So it's impossible really to predict what's going to happen, but I, I just try to lay out the situation on the ground where they're arming people that literally, in some cases, a week ago, were launching attacks against them, just like they did in Fallujah, sometimes days. They're arming them, and these people are getting training. A lot of the times they're doing joint patrols. So these resistance fighters are getting great intel on the Americans. Of course, the Americans are getting great intel on them, too. Um, but this is going to get really, really ugly. And what happens then when Saad al Sadr puts his militia back online? What happens when the U.S. stops paying the concerned local citizens or makes a move that, 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 that some of the tribal leaders controlling these guys decide they don't really like so much? Or what happens when uh, uh, these groups then decide to start taking on the Bada organization or some of the Mahdi army fighters? I mean, and the U.S. is instigating this. So, I mean, it's so volatile and it's so complex and there's so many groups uh, with so many different agendas and so much animosity towards other groups that it's really... It's impossible to predict, and it's 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 literally like you know, and it's it's like a, a dry you know a lot of dry grass and brush that you know just any little spark's going to set it off. And right now, my thinking, if I had to predict it, the spark will be bombing Iran, because I you know one thing we we look at the occupation historically, there's been these ebbs and flows of violence, and consistently the lowest ebbs of violence, uh, the the lowest ebbing of the violence, uh, or, or the heaviest ebb, uh, you get what I'm trying to say, uh, has been followed by periods of violence never seen before. And, uh, you know, for example, last uh, roughly May, June, and July were three of the most violent months of, of the entire occupation for, for U.S. forces. And that followed a few months, a few months where uh, it had decreased and decreased, and we started seeing some of this propaganda. We're saying, well, look, it's getting better, and attacks are down. Bang, in May alone, there were over 6,000 attacks on U.S. and Iraqi forces. It was one of the most violent months of the entire occupation. And right now, we are in probably one of the lowest deaths we've seen of the entire occupation. So, wait and see. So just before